I'm Ashish Wagmare. I'm a specialist at Leicester General Hospital. I first of all thank uh, Firaz and our UK team to give me this opportunity to share my experience of FRCS exam. I gave this exam last month and I would like to share some tips to you all so that you can benefit from it. So the study materials which I use for this exam are the Fazal Ali book for the examination techniques. I cannot stress the importance of concise notes as it has all the material which you require for passing this exam along with the evidences. So you don't need to go hunting and searching in the last minute because this is a very crucial time for you all. I also read Viva guide as that gave me the flavor of what questions can be asked in the exams. So the exam structure, as you all are familiar, we have one day of clinicals, which carries equal marks as the orals. And um, most of us candidates do a mistake by practicing more for the orals and less for the clinicals. Because the Viva practice, which we do, carries a we spend a lot of time in that and do not do more of clinical practice. So I would stress, like to stress the importance of practicing clinicals. The total passing marks of 576, if you score six every in each station, but that's not practical in the real life scenario as some stations or some cases, you will score less, you will score four and five. And that is the reason why it is very important to score sevens and eights in other stations so that you can compensate for the marks where you have scored badly. Um, you will get, for my, for my exam in February, we got half an hour between each cases for ch changing the rooms and uh, for, because the, the, uh, the, the rooms were different for the VIVAs as well as for the clinicals. For the oral, you can get somewhere around five minutes to half an hour of break in between the two, in between the two stations for the oral days. The exam day, the dress up is formal, particularly for the intermediates, you have to tuck the tie in the shirt, bare below the elbows. But for the rest of the exam, you can wear a suit as well as you don't need to be bare below the elbow for the short cases as there will be no patients for that. So the patients were introduced from November onwards last year for the intermediates, which they do not still have patients for the short cases in the clinicals, they may introduce that in the November exam. Accommodation, um, I preferred staying in the exam center as it was very convenient. The exam center is usually costly and, and many people will not get it, but it prevents the hassle of travel. You need to have a good rest before the exam and also don't overpopulate your mind with negative thoughts or with the last minute information before the exam as that will not help you at all. Whatever information you have or whatever uh, practice you have done in the last six months will help you in passing this exam. Uh, most of the instruments which I have depicted in this picture are provided at the station, but um, some of them may not be. So I would take all of them with me. I carried all of them with me. For my short, for my intermediate case, I had a Dupuytren's case, which had, which was hand examination. Uh, there was no key there. So luckily I had a key in my pocket. They had a pen as well as a coin, but they did not have a key. So always it is best to carry all the things with you. Uh, you may skip the goniometer as uh, you will not have time to measure the angles correctly. Uh, for the for the examination, so you may skip the goniometer there. The clinical examination usually you will have small cubicles like you have in your hospital when you are doing clinics. It will be either a patient will be either sat in a chair for foot and ankle case or for upper limb case or for a hand case. Uh, they will be caught only for hips and knees. You will not have a massive space there to examine the gate in detail. So whatever you can pick from the gate, you have to pick and uh, tell it to the examiner. If you can't pick, if you can just say that there is some abnormality in the gate, it is not stable, it is not symmetrical, that will be more than enough if you can't describe it correctly. Compartmentalize each case and station. I would say if you do badly in one uh, inter intermediate case or in one short case, then don't carry out that stress to the next case as 
otherwise you will mess up full exam so if even if you do badly in one station you can make it make up for it in the other stations so this is the actual marking sheet what the examiner marks you for uh, th this is the what i got from uh, when i asked for my feedback so if you see here the clinical intermediate case it is divided into 5 minutes of history examination and investigation and treatment and the marks are there on the history data gathering summarizing of the history presentation your structure your thought process the next 5 minutes are for the clinical examination how how fluently you examine the patient interpretation of the finding plan of the investigation the, what differential diagnosis you give clinical knowledge is tested there also in the treatment part the general management discussion of the treatment option and the clinical reasoning this is very important approach to the patient bedside manner and professionalism so how fluent you are how well you communicate have a smiling face all this counts in the exam history taking have a set of questions for each topic and condition if you don't have that concise notes book has in 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 start of every section they have a beautiful set of questions and i i use those set of questions for each topic practice it on patients and time it timing is very crucial you will you, the 5 minutes will just fly uh, and uh, i would say ask your consultant and colleague to give you feedback this this mock test which you are giving today will give you that feedback which you require you have to finish history within 4 minutes so 3 and a half minutes for gathering the history and 30 seconds for summarizing that history so previous in previous exam they used to ring bell at every 5 minutes so that the history section stops and you have to proceed to the examination in my february exam there was no bell so at 5 minutes so the examiner told me to move to the examination once the history was complete so have a very detailed structure of the history it's very crucial and gives the first impression to the examiner of how well the candidate you are also treatment history one of my colleague he didn't pass the exam because he did not ask the detailed history of the rheumatoid arthritis in a patient with a rheumatoid hand so having a structure of the history is very very important you cannot pass the intermediate station if you fail in the history examination again as i told this book is the the ideal book and the most crucial book for examination follow one sequence of steps the examiner will interrupt you within the examination and you will lose your flow if you don't follow or if you don't memorize the steps you will be out of order and that is what the examiner will take into account and you mark you low just remember one test for one muscle like for subscap either do a belly press or do a gerber's lift off don't learn too many test as you won't have so much time in the actual exam give clear and loud instruction no mumbling and appear confident and commanding and this will only come with practice in the mock viva or in the actual clinical setting in the hospital be specific to the examination finding and be specific to the condition you are examining you cannot be doing instability test for patient who have rotator cuff tear which you are in which you are suspecting a rotator cuff tear so you have to be specific for what you are examining and the key is again practicing it for the discussion part i would say investigation should be specific you cannot be saying just i will do this and that you have to be specific what you want x rays or imaging like mri scan and don't waste too much time in describing this is a skeletally mature or immature patient's x ray that that does not carry any mark you can straight away start in this ap x ray i can see or in this mri t2 bit image i can see the following findings and what it signifies and how will you treat that patient so in the non operative findings always mention that and the patient's his treatment history will give you um idea of what non op treatment have been tried and what you can give to the patient operative treatment again it is very important we are surgeons and the treatment lie and uh, marks lies in the operative treatment it's best to take the ownership of uh, the patient and say that in my practice i will do a like a fascia palmar fascia tummy for um, a dupetrin contracture or 
So if you say that in my practice, I do this, or I would like to do this, that will tell the examiner that you are taking the ownership of the patient and then you will score more in the exam. Again, in the short cases, uh, this is the actual marking points. You can see here the clinical skills are tested and how well you elicit the differential diagnosis. Clinical knowledge for diagnosis and management. So you will either have a picture or a video and they will ask, how will you examine the patient? When they say, how will you examine the patient? Don't start asking the history of the patient there because the history is not, won't carry marks in short cases if they are asking you to examine. Focus your examination, tell the differential diagnosis, tell the management. Then they will can ask you the principles of that. So the common short cases, which every candidate will get is hip, leg length discrepancy, Thomas test, Trindle and Burke test. And there's some more list here, which you can go through. Basic science. Uh, basic science, I, I'm again repeating myself, but concise orthopedic has got everything what you want for basic science. In the exam, you will they will test your core knowledge and the, how well you express it confidently. If you if you express something confidently, they won't ask you in detail about that. But if you if you mumble or if you uh, don't tell it confidently, then the the questions will start after that. So there are very standard set of questions for basic science. I used Quintang videos as well to give me that uh, 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 the photographic input and Rishidir's videos also I had used. So applied basic science is what they test. Now in this X-ray, if you see, there's a fractal line being seen in this along with the plate. So the viva here can go into either non-union, it can go into bone graft, it can go into how the fracture heals, but this is just a prop. And you have to move on within 30 seconds describing this X-ray and move on to the core topic, what they want. The examiner will guide you for that. Adult path was always a tricky, thing for me as the, the, the scenarios are not straightforward. Your opening sentence of 30 seconds determine how well the candidate you are. It only determines the adult path station will be not be straightforward. Like they won't give you a straightforward valgus knee. They will give you a valgus knee with a deformed femur. And then they will see how thought your thought process is, how you carry out in that, in that scenario. Again, take a focused history and say, I would like to know if the patient has say rheumatoid arthritis or history of any infection or trauma, instead of asking one question at a time as that will waste your time. Again, focused examination. By, uh, by remembering this phase, I would examine this to check for this, which signifies this. So have a structure to your answer and they will test your treatment principle. Trauma, description of x-rays, photographs in 30 seconds, tell the detail associated injuries, and also, if you can tell the prognosis from that X-ray in the first 30 seconds, you will score more. Don't repeat ATLS in every scenario. You can say, considering this is an isolated injury or I've done the ATLS. People say that classification is not important, but for ACJ injuries, if you don't mention the Rockwood classification, you will not probably pass that station. So classifications are important in some, some cases. Boast guidelines, everybody should remember that. And in treatment, again, I would like to do what you would like to do, not what are the treatment options. Approaches, again, there is a standard pattern for that, for indication, position, landmarks. So if you go up to the approaches and the treatment, you have already passed the trauma station. For PEDS and hands, again, PEDS, some of the PEDS topic are like hip infection are pass and fail questions. And if you haven't done PEDS in this country, then I would, I, I would say ideally discuss it with the PEDS consultant, these core topics before the exam. Rheumatoid hand, hand injuries, again, these are very common topics. And they will ask you, because this PEDS and hand station will be done by the pediatric consultant and hand consultant, they may go into detail of every station or every case of every management. So they, will, they may ask you the approaches and how it's done in the UK practice. So, these are some of the tips which I would like to share. Mock Viva, again, like a Mock Viva today, will give you the real exam feel, the timing, the, and it will help you structure the answer. It will give you the valuable feedback from the faculties, and also it will boost your confidence. So I will wish you all best luck for the exam, and most of you will be giving the exam in April. Best of luck.